Good afternoon. I know you were looking forward to not having class this afternoon, uh, but I don't want you to be bored sitting alone in the dorms. Um, actually, I'm really concerned about getting behind because we have a lot of reading, as you know, and I don't want you to be in a situation where you're doubling up on your reading because we missed class. So I thought that modern technology could help us, and it's not as much fun as being interactive, um, but I will do my best to keep you entertained as we go through today, January 26th, um, the, the course we would have had if we could meet together. Um, the first thing that we need to work on is learning how to do a thesis statement because your homework that I'm assigning today, which will be due when we come to class on Thursday, is to write the thesis statement for your first essay. Um, students don't believe me when I say this, but eventually by the end of class they always say, oh, now I get it. If you don't get the thesis statement right, nothing else works, and that's absolutely true. It's hard because you're transitioning from the way you wrote in high school to how you write in college, and there is a big difference. Um, in high school, it was okay to simply tell what went on in the story. In this case, you need to analyze. You need to talk about what's significant and what it means. We've done a lot of this in class, um, and now I'm challenging you to do it on your own. So if you would like to follow along, you need to have two devices, obviously, but if you happen to have a laptop and a tablet, um, I don't know how well this will work on the phone, but if you want to follow along, there is a PowerPoint. Um, normally my PowerPoints go under in Blackboard under the heading PowerPoint, but because this is part of the series of reference materials I've put together for you for essays, um, it's actually found in Blackboard under Writing Aids. I want to make sure this is really clear, Writing Aids. And the title of the um, PowerPoint is Thesis Statement. It's specifically how to craft a thesis statement. So if you want to follow along, I'll give you a second to pull that up. The first thing that you get to do to get ready to write your thesis statement is simply to think about what we've read so far in the Odyssey. And you can do that anywhere. You can do that in the restroom. You can do that while you're eating lunch. You can do that while you're walking from one class to another. Um, you can do it while the commercials are on in television, wherever, whatever. And it's very simple. You just think about what in the story jumped out at you or what really interests you. A lot of people, for example, are really uh, keen on Athena. They think she's really cool because she uses all these different disguises and she does all these cool things. She actually has um, a whole agenda having to do with Telemachus and she certainly has a long time relationship with Odysseus. Um, she helps Penelope and she cares about Penelope's appearance. Um, and she also worries about not hacking off Poseidon and she worries about getting daddy to help her without hacking off Poseidon. Um, so that's just one example. You might be able to identify better with Telemachus because he's fairly close to your age. Um, you might decide that the old nurse Euryclea is of interest to you. So it could be a person. It also could be a thing. Like you could be really intrigued by how the gods act either toward one another or how they treat humans. Or you might want to look at how the humans react to the gods. How do they view the gods? How do they treat the gods? What do they say to each other about the gods? Um, when they do things like offering sacrifice, do they do it willingly? Or do they do it because they're scared? And these are all things that you will interpret. Um, they don't necessarily, they're not necessarily spelled out in the text, but you're going to use the text as evidence, almost like you're presenting a court case. Um, you could also look at symbols. You could look at what does the C mean. In those days, the C was very, very significant, and it's almost like a person. Um, you could look at wine. Believe it or not, wine appears in a lot of our scenes, um, both home, back on the ranch in Ithaca, and also when Telemachus is traveling. They talk a lot about wine. What does wine mean? How is it used in that culture? Something you could write about. So these are just some ideas. Um, you can find more ideas if you're really stumped and you have writer block. Also, in the same place under writing aids, there's a document called suggested topics for essay number one. So that might be a place for you to start. At any rate, 
think about what really jumps out at you from the work. Now this is the broad big picture. Now obviously you can't write a paper on wine or on Athena. You need to narrow it down. So now you need to think about something relating to that person or that object. So let's just use as an example Telemachus. Okay, I'm intrigued by Telemachus, but what about him? Well, one of the most obvious things would be his maturing process. He's coming of age just as you are. And so you might say, you know, that's something I really relate to. So I'd like to write about Telemachus coming of age and, and how he goes about maturing and how Athena helps him maybe. Or if you wanted to write about the gods, you might say, you know, I really want to write about how the humans relate to the gods and what they think of the gods. Or I want to write about how the gods misbehave or how the gods treat each other. The next step is perhaps the most challenging, and it's one of the reasons why I'm having you do it now. Find some relevant passages or examples in the text. And this is something you can do as you're doing your normal homework reading. You can also flip back through your lecture notes and look at things that we've talked about, because we've talked about some really interesting scenes. So for example, if you were doing Telemachus, you might look back to the first time that Athena appeared to him and she basically told him, man up Telemachus, time for you to start acting like a grown up. You might look back to the passage where he met with the leaders of his country, the people who are just one level below him, um, how that meeting went up on that hill when he said to them, I'm really tired of the suitors, mostly your sons, coming to my house and eating me out of house and home, and, and how he kind of lost it, lost control of his emotions. How he behaved when he met with King es Nestor, and how he behaved when he met with Menelaus. Um, so those are things you go back and you say, well, can I find some examples of Telemachus coming of age. Can I find examples of the humans and their interactions with gods? Then you have to take a position and that's probably the hardest part. Your purpose of, in writing this paper is to persuade somebody of something. So you have to say here it is, here's what I'm going to prove. That's what a thesis is. It's different from a scientific paper in that with a scientific paper, you have a hypothesis. And if you don't know this, hypo, H-Y-P-O as a prefix, means less than. So a hypothesis is something that hasn't yet been proven. There isn't enough data, and you have to conduct an experiment. A thesis is different in that we already have the data. We have our text. We have our book. We have examples that we can use. So we don't need to run an experiment. We already have the data. So our thesis is really your point, that which is to be proven, that which you will prove through the evidence that you've pulled out of the text. So now you have to take this narrowed down thesis theme that you have and turn it into a statement, meaning that you have to be able to prove it. Let me give you some examples. If you're looking at Telemachus maturing, then you might say, okay, I have to find some evidence of it. And as I'm looking at the evidence, I can see that before he went on his trip, he wasn't all that mature. First of all, Athena had to come to him and tell him to grow up, so clearly he wasn't grown up before then. And when he had that meeting with the suitors, he was a little more mature, but he still wasn't able to control his emotions and he threw down the speaker's staff. Um, so he was better, but he wasn't fully matured. So what I'm going to say in my thesis statement is that Telemachus' journey, ostensibly to find his father, helped him in his maturing process. Then your examples will have to be examples from after the trip, and they're going to have to be able to prove that he was different when he came back from his trip than he was before. If you were going to take Athena's disguises, something that a lot of students are really fascinated with, your thesis statement would have to talk about why Athena uses disguises. So your thesis statement might be something like, Athena uses disguise in order to force humans to find their own solutions to their problems. If you think about it, if Athena just jumped in as a goddess and waved her little magic wand and said, ah, oh, I'll fix this, well, the humans wouldn't grow, would they? 
And if she appeared as herself, as a goddess, that's exactly what they would expect. They would expect, oh, she's going to solve my problem. So you could argue that she appears as a human in order to help the humans solve their own problems. Or you might argue that she uses disguise in a way that fits the situation. And then you could talk about how, when she appears to Telemachus, she uses older men. When she appears to the Princess Nausicaa, she appears as a young woman because that's who Nausicaa would listen to. When she appears to Athena, uh, I'm sorry, to Penelope, she just appears in her dreams. Um, so you might talk about the quality of the disguises and why Athena uses those disguises. Those are just some examples, and now I've written your paper for you, right? The next thing is to make sure that you can find three to four examples. At this point, since you've not read the whole book, if you have even two examples, you're probably okay. Um, and remember that I'm going to be on the receiving end, and I have read the whole book, so I will be able to say to you, yeah, those are two really good examples, but guess what? There's not a third one out there. Um, ideally, you'd want to have three or four to really make your case. You also have to ask yourself, can anybody make a counter-argument? Is my thesis strong enough to stand up to maybe one or two examples of the opposite thing happening? You just have to play the devil's advocate. Then you have to ask yourself, does anybody care? And I call this the so what test. If you wrote a thesis that said, Gee, the people in the Odyssey drink a lot of wine. Well, indeed, that's true. But does anybody care? The fact that they're sitting around drinking wine? I would say not so much. But if you wanted to write about what wine symbolizes and why it was important in that society, then that's a wholly different thing, and that probably would work. To test your thesis, once you have it all together, insert the phrase, I'm going to prove that. You won't actually write that down. Just mentally in your head say, I'm going to prove that, and then read your thesis statement. Does it work? Does it work with the phrase, I'm going to prove that, in front of it? Um, if it does, then you only have to pass the so what test, and you'll be good to go. Once you've put together your thesis statement, I also need a very brief bulleted list of what your examples are going to be. They don't have to be very well detailed. I just need to be able to understand how you're going to go about proving this thesis. Sometimes I receive a thesis statement and I'm really not sure what you mean by it, so this will help me to be able to tell you if it's going to work. Once you're ready, go to Blackboard and you'll see on the menus a new heading called Thesis Statement. Thesis Statement. Click on that and there'll be an icon that lets you upload. There's also an example that I have written about Odysseus. My theory is that although a lot of people say that Odysseus is a great hero, in fact, he has dark side and he makes some really bad decisions for very selfish reasons. And if you look at my thesis statement, you'll be able to see where I wrote that and where I also wrote examples of a bulleted list of what my examples would look like. Um, that'll give you an idea of the amount of detail that you have to use, which is really not very much at all, just enough so that I can understand what you're saying. When you click on that button, you'll see some different choices. You can, if you want to write your thesis statement directly into the document, click on the button that says Write and then it will pop up a new screen where you can type your answer in. Do not, under any circumstances, write your thesis statement in the section that says comments. Um, what happens when you do that is I can't see it. I can only see that you sent me a comment. Um, it's really meant for comments like, I'm sorry this was late, and it smashes everything together so your bulleted list will disappear um, and it won't show up on my grading screen. So once you've typed your thesis statement and the bulleted list underneath it, then you click Submit. If you'd rather, you can write your thesis statement and your bulleted list as a Microsoft Word document, and there's a button that says Browse My Computer to Upload. That may, in fact, be the easier way to do it. Again, once you've uploaded, just click the Submit button. It will come to me in a bucket I have that says Needs Grading. This is an ungraded exercise, so everybody gets a grade of zero because it doesn't go into the gradebook. 
when it comes back to you, you'll get um, a message from Blackboard telling you that, that it's back and that it's been graded. You will see under My Grades, if you know how to access that, um, you'll see under My Grades that the grade of zero, but that's a good thing. Um, and next to it, you'll see a little thing that looks like in a comic strip when somebody is talking, it looks like a little talking bubble. If you click that, my comments back to you will appear. So you'll be able to see whether I said this is great or whether I said, yes, I think this will work, but it needs a little bit of tweaking. If you need to tweak it, I will tell you whether you need to resubmit or not. A lot of times I simply have some suggestions and I'm confident that you can do it on your own. If I ask you to resubmit, I've set the machine to let you submit as many times as you need to to get it right. So um, you just do the whole process all over again. I just want to be sure that you're on the right footing so that your first essay is easy to write um, and that you can get a good grade on it because I'm really afraid that if you don't start off with a really good thesis statement, it's going to go downhill. So this is really, sounds like a big onerous assignment, but it's really only one sentence plus a few bullets. Um, and it's my effort to try to help you get off on the right foot. If you don't know how to access my grades, I will tell you now. If you go under the, the rubric tools, let me write that down for you. So you go into Blackboard, you go into the page for this course, and you go under Tools. Um, if you click on that, it'll bring up a whole menu, and in the column on the right side of the page is My Grades. So click on that, and you'll be able to see what your grades are for this class. So far, nothing. I know that you're really concerned now about the reading quiz. Um, the reading quiz will be the next time we meet, which I hope will be on Thursday, and I will adjust the questions to relate to the reading that I will be assigning you today. Um, and I will talk about that at the end of the third segment. So this is segment one of three um, covering today's class. And when you're ready, you can X out of this one and move on to the next video session. So I hope this helps you not miss me quite so much. And stay tuned for section two of three.